فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد we were in the explanation of the book wasiyah al imam abdul rahman ibn yahya al muallimi to his student al shaykh muhammad ibn ahmed al muallimi we took the first matlab the first unit the first chapter we're now going to go into the second one inshallah ta'ala the second chapter is baqiyatu arkan al iman the remaining pillars of iman the shaykh says وهي الإيمان بملائكة الله وأنهم عباد غيبيون مطيعون لربهم عز وجل لا يسبقونه بالقول ولا يفعلون إلا ما يأمرهم ولا يشفعون عنده إلا لمن ارتضى بعد إذنه سبحانه لهم ولا يشفعون عنده إلا لمن ارتضى بعد إذنه سبحانه لهم ولا يرغبون ولا يرغبون هم في أن يشفعوا إلا أن يعلموا إذن الله تعالى ورضاه في أن يشفعوا ولا يفعلون إلا ما يأمرهم ربهم عز وجل. The Sheikh says and also to believe in the angels of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and the angels are slaves of Allah سبحانه وتعالى but they are from the unseen. It is not something it's not a creation which we can see. It's from the unseen. And they are in obedience to Allah. They obey Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. مُطِيعُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ Everything Allah commands them, they do it. As He commands them. لَا يَسْبِقُونَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ They don't precede Him in statement. They don't do anything before Him. They don't speak back to Him. عَزَّ وَجَلَّ And they don't do وَلَا يَفْعَلُونَ إِلَّا مَا يَأْمُرُهُمْ They don't do except that which He commands them. They are in full adherence to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And they also don't intercede. They don't intercede for anybody except after Allah gives them permission and is pleased with it. بعد إذن سبحانه لهم. ولا يرغبون هم في أن يشفعوا إلا أن يعلموا إذن الله تعالى. And they are so obedient that they don't even want to intercede for anybody unless they have knowledge that Allah wa Taala will give them permission to do it. And that Allah is pleased for them to intercede for this person. They won't even do it. They don't want to do it. And they only do that which they are commanded to do. So this is an advice that he's telling his student. Believe in the angels. Come with al iman bil malaika and this is what? This is the second pillar. And tu'mina billahi wa malaikati is the second pillar. And there are evidences you can find, a lot of evidences. From them is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 285. Allah says, آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا وفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير. They believe in the messengers and they also believe in that which the messengers came with. This is the statement of Allah. I'm explaining the قوله تعالى. And they also believe in what? كل آمن بالله وملائكته and the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is ayah as an evidence for it. Also the lengthy hadith of Jibreel is an evidence. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was asked about iman and the Prophet responded by saying أن تؤمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر وتؤمن بالقدر خيره وشره. Imam Muslim narrated this on the authority of who? Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Um, 
عبد الرحمن يحيى المعلمي الإمام العلامة عبد الرحمن يحيى المعلمي after mentioning in believing the angels he moved on to some of the actions of the angels and some of the things that they do and that is their characteristics and their attributes which is that they obey Allah wa ta'ala and they don't proceed they don't do anything before him and that is what Allah said about them Allah said وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدًا They said, Allah has taken a child. Subhanah, exalted is he. بَلْ عِبَادٌ مُكْرَمُونَ They are not my children or my descendant or my offspring. They are the angels. They are slaves who are honorable. عِبَادٌ مُكْرَمُونَ Because that's what they were trying to say, that the angels are the, the uh, offspring of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah explains them more. لا يسبقونه بالقول وهم بأمره يعملون. They don't precede him in his speech, and they don't do except that which he commands them. يعلم ما بين أيديهم. Allah knows everything that they that's in front of them. وما خلفهم and that which is behind them. Allah knows everything. ولا يشفعون and they don't intercede. They don't intercede. إلا نمن إلا نمن ارتضى except those who Allah is pleased with سبحانه وتعالى. وهم من خشيته مشفقون and they are in consistent fear of Allah سبحانه وتعالى سورة الأنبياء آية 26 to آية 28 so this is where he took it from this آية that this is the characteristics of the angels so my beloved brothers and sisters this gives us a lesson this gives us a lesson and a reminder which is Allah doesn't need us Allah Allah doesn't need us and he already has a creation who are more than us in number they are far greater than us in number. And they are far greater than us in power and strength. And they obey him. They are honorable. They are Everything he tells them to do, they do. Allah says, every single thing that they are commanded, they'll do. They don't precede it. And then you as a slave have to realize that you're the one who needs Allah. You're the one who's out there to save your flesh and your bones from the hellfire. Don't have kindness and generosity to anybody else. Don't care for anyone else if you don't want to. But just be careful and kind towards yourself. The Shaykh goes on to say, وَالْإِيمَانُ بِكُتُبِ اللَّهِ To believe in the book of Allah. أَلَّتِي أَنزَلَهَا عَلَىٰ أَنْبِيَائِهِ To believe in the books. In which Allah has sent down on His Prophets. وَالْمُهَيْمِنُ And the one that abrogates. عَلَيْهَا الْقُرْآنِ You believe in the books that have been abrogated before and you believe in the Qur'an that we have today. وَأَنَّهُ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ And you believe that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. أَنزَلَهُ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ And he sent it down on Muhammad. You believe this. This is the third pillar. <coughs> From the pillars of what? Al-Iman. Which is what? Al-Iman بِالْكُتُبِ الْمُنَزَّلَةِ Believing in the books that were sent down from Allah wa ta'ala on the Prophets. The ones that we know is a Tawrat. Tawrat is sent down on who? Karimullah. The one who Allah spoke to. Musa alayhi salam. Well, Injil. Injil. Al-Munazzal. That was sent down on who? Ala kalimatillahi. The word of Allah. Isa ibn Maryam. Was Zabur. And Zabur. We know it. Al-Munazzal. That was sent down on who? Ala Nabi Allah Dawood. Was sent down on the Prophet of Allah Dawood alayhi salam. And these are mentioned in the Quran. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala He says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, aminu billahi. Oh, those of you who believe, believe in Allah. Wa rusulihi, and also believe in the messengers. Wal kitabi, and also believe in the books. الَّذِي نَزَّلَ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ That which the messengers were sent down with. And that was sent down on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَالْكِتَابِ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ مِنْ قَبْلِ And also believe in the books that were sent down before Nabi Allah Muhammad on the previous prophets. Believe in that as well. وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِاللَّهِ Anyone who disbelieves in Allah. وَمَلَائِكَةِ And disbelieves in the angels. وَكُتُوبِهِ And disbelieves in the books. وَرُسُولِهِ And disbelieves in the messengers. وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And he disbelieves in the day of judgment. فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا he has become misguided, a deep misguidance. 
Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 136. So the author here mentions this. We also have to understand another point that the Sheikh Rahimahullah pointed out, which is that this Quran abrogated all the previous books. And that is what the previous verse that I mentioned was in Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 136. And this is in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 48. Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ We have set down on you the book. بِالْحَقِّ with truth. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ It believes and it testifies to the previous certain prophets. The books that you guys have, that's in front of you, all Christians and all Jews, this book has come to testify for it. Is that all? لا. وَمُهَيْمِنَ الْعَلَيْهِ And also to abrogate it. It will strengthen some things and say, yes, this is part of the religion of Allah. It will still carry on. And it supports your books in it. And it is also going to abrogate it. Then the Shaykh, after mentioning that, Rahimahullah, he mentions, kalamullah, That is the statement of Allah. This Quran that we have is the speech of Allah. And the evidence is for that. In the Quran is extensive. And the evidences in the Sunnah are also large in amount. But if you look at Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 6, Allah says, وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِ وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِغْهُ مَأْمَنَةً ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ If a disbeliever asks for shelter, Allah says, give him a shelter until he hears the speech of Allah. حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ Until he hears the speech of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah referred to it as what? Speech. His speech. Also in Surah Al-Fatiha, Ayah 15, what does he say? Subhanahu wa ta'ala, يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُبَدِّلُوا كَلَامَ اللَّهِ They want to change the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the ijma' ahl sunnah that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Shaykh, rahimahullah, is elaborating that the Qur'an is what? أَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ That the Qur'an is كَلَامُ اللَّهِ is the speech of Allah. غَيْرُ مَخْلُوقٍ And it is not created. مِنْهُ بَدَأَ أَمَا مِنْهُ بَدَأَ However way you want to say it. From Allah it came or from Allah it started. وَإِلَيْهِ يَعُودُ And it will go back to him. And this is the aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. In which we believe regarding the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the shaykh goes on to say وَالْإِيمَانُ بِرُسُولِ اللَّهِ Believing also in the messengers of Allah. وَهُمْ أُنَاسٌ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ to believe in the messengers and to also believe that the messengers are humans. They are human beings. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Kahf, Ayah 110, قُلْ Say to the Muhammad, إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرُ مِثْلُكُمْ Say to them, I am nothing except a human like you. But the difference is what? يُوحَى إِلَيَّ Revelation is sent on me. The only difference between me and you is that revelation supports me. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, قَالَتْ رُسُولُهُمْ إِن نَحْنُ إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ قَالَتْ رُسُولُهُمْ Their messenger said to them, every nation, إِن نَحْنُ We are nothing except إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ We are nothing except humans, just like you. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ But the difference here is, وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَمُنُّ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ Allah blesses, he sends virtue on whoever he wills with prophecy. And then the greatest virtue a person can have, the highest station is prophecy. There's no station greater than that. So what did they say first? Like it? We are what? Then my beloved brothers and sisters, the prophets are those two levels. Messengers and prophets are like that. They are humans. If you take them above that, you have fallen into what? You have fallen into the extremism and the exaggeration of who? The Christians. And if you take them below their status, you have fallen into the other form of leniency, excessive leniency and exaggeration on the other scale, on the other side of the Jews who belittle Nabi Allah Isa ibn Maryam, who even killed or wanted to kill him, Isa ibn Maryam, who ridiculed our Prophet, Salawatullahi wa fought against him. They are what? They put below the prophets, uh, belittle the prophets. So that's his two stations. He's a bashar, but he's not just an ordinary bashar. 
He's a human, but he's not just an ordinary human being. والإيمان برسول الله وهم أناس من البشر اختارهم الله الله chose them. Allah, the prophecy is a choice. Allah has. He is the one who chooses. He not that you want and you get it. It's something Allah chooses. It's Allah's choice. As he said in Surah Al-An'am, Ayah 124, Allah أعلم حيث يدعو رسالته. Allah is the one who knows where he's going to place his message. And who is he going to give it to? He knows that. It's for Allah. So Allah chose. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنزَلَ عَلَيْهِمْ مَلَائِكَتَهُ And Allah set down on them what? His messengers. For what reason? لِيُبَلِّغُوهُمْ كَلَامَ رَبِّهِمْ Allah sent down on those prophets angels. What did those angels do? They conveyed the message to the prophet. لِيُبَلِّغُوهُمْ كَلَامَ رَبِّهِمْ وَأَمْرَهُ So they can hear about Allah's commands. So they can know what Allah tabarak wa ta'ala wants for him to convey to mankind. حَتَّى يُبَلِّغُوهُ عِبَادَهُ So the angels will come. They will bring the message to the prophets. And then the prophets would convey that message to their people. They would convey that message to their people. And that is what Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he says in Surah Al-Nahl, Ayah 2. يُنَزِّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ بِالْرُوحِ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِي أَنْ أَنْذِرُوا أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاتَّقُونَ Allah says, Allah will send down angels with ruh, revelation here. The ruh here is revelation. Min amri. Ala man yasha'u min ibadi. And Allah sends that angel to whoever he wills. Meaning, whoever who Allah has chosen to be a prophet, he will send that angel to him. For what? For him to do what? For him to go to his people and enviru, to warn his people about the punishment that awaits them if they don't worship Allah alone, if they don't follow the command of Allah alone. أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاتَّقُونَ To worship Allah alone and not to associate partners with Him. To be conscious of Him. That's the message that they are told to convey. وَالرُّسُلُ مَعْصُومُونَ The prophets are what? And the messengers are infallible. فِي كُلِّ مَا يُبَلِّغُونَهُ But they are infallible in that which they are conveying. So this kind of issue is the messengers. عِسْمَةُ الرُّسُلُ And Anbiya. I've done a thorough research on this, inshallah ta'ala. I'm going to one time make it into a, a lecture and a talk, inshallah, of Ismatul Anbiya, the companion, the prophets, the prophets, they're infallible. For major and minor, because we find some prophets like Nabiullah Adam, Nabiullah Musa who punched a man. How? They will reconcile between that. But the messengers are infallible from what? في كل ما يبلغونه and every single thing that they are conveying they are infallible they won't do a mistake they will never do a mistake and Allah mentions that subhanahu wa ta'ala evidence in the Quran to prove that that their message is protected there's no mistake that can come from them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hajj Ayah 52 وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِيٍ إِلَّا إِذَا تَمَنَّا أَلْقَ الشَّيْطَانُ فِي أُمْنِيَّتِ فَيَنْسَقُ اللَّهُ مَا يُلْقِ الشَّيْطَانُ ثُمَّ يُحْكِمُ اللَّهُ آيَاتِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ Allah tells us in this verse that Allah protects the messengers in that which they are conveying. And then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala protects that revelation in all of the calm that can come towards it. Or the things that can want to taint it or change it or alter it or distort it. Such as the shaitan, who might want to throw his falsehood into there, that he can't do it, because he's protected. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Najm, Ayah 3, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ He doesn't speak from his own whims and desires, he's protected from that. He's protected from that. وَلِذَلِكَ أَلْقَاضِ عِيَاضِ In his kitab, الشِّفَىٰ بِتَعْرِيفِ حُقُوقِ الْمُصْطَفَىٰ Second volume. Page 158, he says, لا خلافة, There's no dispute. There's no difference of opinion. أنهم معصومون, That they are infallible from what? من كتمان الرسالة, To conceal the message. They're infallible, they won't do that. Prophets, they are errorless in hiding information. They won't. Are you with me? They can't. ولذلك, the Prophet, if there was ever an ayah that he would have hid, would have been the ayah regarding 
فلما فلما قضى زيد منها وطرا زوجناكها لكي لا هي ورف هيدا آية من سورة الأحزاب قضية when he became shy about the issue of Zainab بنت جحش آه and he didn't wanna and Allah تبارك وتعالى he says to him that convey the message and tell the people so the prophets are infallible in that regard what تقصير في التبليغ and they're also infallible from being short in conveying the message. They don't do a bad job when they convey the message. They will do it accurately, correctly, in the best way, form and shape. That's, there's no dispute about that, he says. And the statement of Qadi Iyad in his Kitab al-Shifa, and Imam al-Qurtubi transmits it. Al-Shawkani also brings it in his Tafsir as well, and also other scholars. Ibn Taymiyyah mentions it in his 10th volume, in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, page 200 and... 89 to page 290. So this is not a dispute. As for what the Shia Rafid alayhi min Allahi ma yastahiqoon, may Allah give them what they deserve. They give ismatu al a'imma that this is turrahat, khuzabalat. It's called what? Khuzabalat. It's jokes. It's la qimata lahu. It's made up, false. There's nothing to that. There's no such thing as. لا ولا أبو بكر وزن معصوم ولا عمر وزن معصوم ولا عثمان is not معصوم ولا علي is not معصوم no one after the prophet is معصوم you see صادقون في ذلك كله مع طهارتهم في أنفسهم وصدقهم ومحبتهم لله عز وجل وطاعتهم له they are also truthful the prophets are very truthful in everything they are pure in their essence in their essence, they are pure. وَمَحَبَّتِهِمْ لِلَّهِ Their love for Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. وَطَاعَتِهِمْ لَهُ And their obedience to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Because they are role models. The prophets and the messengers are the role models. And a role model is a person who is complete. Complete. So the people can follow them. So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala will not choose a person who is a scumbag. لا قيمة له Nothing. He has no value. And make him a role model for everybody to follow. But rather, Allah will choose subhanahu wa ta'ala أَطْحَرُ الْبَشَرِ قُلُوبًا The person who has the most, the cleanest of hearts. وَأَزْكَ أَخْلَاقًا And he has the most purest of manners and etiquettes. وَأَدْوَدْهُمْ قَرِيحًا وَخَاتَمُهُمْ Those messengers of those character and that nobility, the final one of them is Muhammad. بَلَّغَ رِسَالَةَ رَبِّهِ We witness and we testify this final messenger. There's no messenger after him. ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين آية فوت سورة الحزاب. He's the final messenger. There's no prophet after him. The prophet specifically said in the hadith of Sahihain, in the hadith of Abu Huraira, أنا خاتم الأنبياء. I'm the final. In another way, the prophet Salam said, أنا لا نبي بعدي. There's no prophet after me. Final prophet. There's no prophet after me. This hadith which says. أنا خاتم الأنبياء was not only narrated from Abu Huraira it was narrated from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri al-Irbaz ibn Sariya Abdullah ibn Abbas Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Aas Abi Umamat al-Bahili Anas ibn Malik Salman al-Farisi Aisha radhi Allah ta'ala anha Sahal ibn Sa'ad ibn Sa'idi Abi Dharr al-Ghifari In other words it is a nasun mutawatir Suyuti He has a book where he talks about multitude narrations It's called Qatf al-Azhar al-Mutanathira Fil al-Hadith al-Mutawatira He brought it in there that this hadith is mutawatir Al-Kitani in his kitab Nadm al-Mutanathir He brings Al-Albani in Irwa al-Ghalil Ala kulli hal This issue of prophecy It's a ijma' qat'i It's not ijma' sukuti The ijma' are two times, right? It's a clear-cut ijma' Qat'i Anna Muhammadan khatamun al-anbiya That is the final prophet and messenger Not two Muslims have ever disputed this So the Qadianis are kuffar Kuffar لا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الآخر ومن شك في كفره هو كافر. anyone who doubts whether they are kafir, he is a kafir. they are kafir because they go against these rules. no Muslims disagree. 